welcome memoir viewers. And today we're going to be talking about something that is not my sexuality. Because this is supposed to be my YouTube therapy. And as I said in my previous video, my sexuality is not the biggest issue in my life. At all. <laughs> so, mm. today instead of sexuality, we're going to be talking about bullying and how I experience bullying every single year of my school life from the ages of four to the age of 16. And I had every form of bullying you could possibly get. For the most part, it was just verbal, name calling, bullying. But by the age of maybe 12, it's a fun year being 12. Yeah, by about age 12, I started having people throw things at me in the middle of lessons. And I had people cyber bullying me, saying things about me on Facebook, taking pictures of me without my knowledge and posting them. But the worst part was the verbal and the isolation that came with that. Because I would get isolated from everyone else because I became convinced that I wasn't good enough to hang around with anyone because I clearly wasn't because I would get called names even by my friends at the time so in about year 8 which is when I was about how old was I in year 8? 12? about 12 <laughs> I went through two groups of friends and Apparently, I wasn't pushed out of the first like, friend group. Apparently, that was just something I made up, but it wasn't. Because I wouldn't get invited to parties that they were all invited to. I was isolated from all the fun they were having, and then they'd come back to me the next after the weekend and go, Oh, why didn't you come to blah blah blah's party? Because I wasn't invited. And I'm not saying that I wanted to be invited because usually I didn't know the people that were having these parties. But the point is, I was completely left out of the conversation. And when we would have group conversations, I'd be sat on the sidelines because every time I tried to talk, someone would talk over me. Until one day, it just got too much for me and I walked away. Which may sound, makes it sound as if I'm the one who chose to leave, but I did because choosing to leave was the best thing for me in that situation because being in that group just made me feel so isolated and so for a couple of months I was alone I hung out by myself until my form tutor homeroom teacher I think is the American whatever but yeah my form tutor she saw me hanging out by myself and was like Oh yeah, I'm going to reintroduce you to your friend group. Worst decision she ever tried to make. And literally, it lasted one the same lunchtime she tried to put us back together. Because I sat there, and after she, she'd had a conversation about isolation and blah blah blah, some bullshit about not leaving people out or something, I don't fucking know. But yeah, we sat there in pretty much silence the entire lunchtime. And so the next day I just moved places. And just basically I couldn't stand still at lunchtime. I would stand still, eat my lunch, and then just walk around for the whole half an hour, 45 minutes that it was that lunch was by myself. It was depressing and lonely and at this point my mental health was at an all time low it was not a fun time but then I heard that a friend I had in primary school was transferring 
into my secondary school. I don't know why, don't really care. But she was transferring back, so I was like, oh, that's cool. I'll have a friend again, because we'll go and hang out again. Nope, not the case. No, um, she made friends with people in her form group, which is fine. But she changed. She had changed since year six to year eight. And she had become someone I didn't recognize. So when I did end up joining her friend group, participating with her friend group, I was already the outsider. I got along with all the guys in the group, no problem, because making friends with guys is really fucking easy. <laughs> There's no drama involved. But the girls in her friend group had an issue with me. Don't know what that issue was, don't know what that issue was. But one day my friend came up to me and said, yeah, can you need to stop hanging out with my, with, with my friends? Because a certain person doesn't like you. She's, I don't know what the issue was, I can't remember if she even said. But yeah, it wasn't that my friend had an issue with me, although I think she might have done. I think she had an issue with the fact that I got along so well with the boys. I fucking know, but yeah. So my friend literally came up to me and said, stop hanging out with me. And of course I did as she said. This is becoming more about my social isolation than bullying, but there you go. But yeah, and while all of this was happening, People were calling me names, and due to all of the crap that was going on with my mental health, I started to eat as a coping me mechanism, and I also wasn't in a good situation at home, so all I was provided was fast food, junk food type of thing. And it wasn't healthy, and so, and just full of empty calories, and so I would just consume more and more and more of it, and obviously, the more you eat, the more you gain. And so I just started gaining more and more weight, and so obviously I was fat. I think by the age of 15, I weighed like 17, 18 stone. Don't know what that is in any other metric units, but that's how much I weighed. And I hated myself for it. But people didn't help because they'd kept, but I had children, year sevens, who were like, 11 years old, they'd come up to me and say, you're a whale, you're a hippo. And it's like, you try and not let that get to you, but it's impossible not to, because you're already thinking it. You're already thinking these things. And so when some random stranger comes up to you and confirms it, it becomes even more impossible to ignore. And that's when my eating issues came up again and the amount of periods I went through of completely not eating because I was like, well I can't just diet because it doesn't work. Impulse control of like a five year old, so. So the amount of periods I went through of just not eating and this time I was also self-harming. I still have scars on my wrist from where I was cutting. But they would also just... They would call me names that didn't make any sense, and they were just... Make, these people would just make up bullshit about me, and they didn't even know who I was. They were like, on a completely separate side of the school, and yet they would still just... And they would just ig ignore me. Or they wouldn't even ignore me. They would call me names and they would talk about me while I was sit sat in front of them or behind them. And I don't ever know what I did to these people to upset them because I'd never had a conversation with them. And so I was just constantly getting like... And also in year seven, when I was about 11, might have been 10, either way, um, 
Yeah, I had a I had a male friend. He was purely a friend. But the constant people going, oh, he's your boyfriend, your boyfriend and girlfriend, blah blah, fucking blah. It wasn't okay with me, and I didn't find it think it was fair on my friend. And he'd already made friends because he was a nerd, and so he found his nerd niche to hang out with. And so I figured. Why should I keep torturing him with it? So I stopped hanging out with him. And so from year seven to year eight, I basically had no friends. And then obviously the year eight thing happened. And then year nine, at this point, I was just in such a dark place in my head that I couldn't talk to anyone. And my family didn't help. I didn't have a relationship with my sister because she lived in another country. I couldn't talk to my brothers because they were either high or just constantly getting pissed off at me for I don't know fucking what. I wasn't a bad kid. I was raising myself from the age of 10. I would have to do my own washing, my own cooking. Like, I'd have to get myself up for school. I'd have to keep my grades up myself without any sort of encouragement or reinforcement for it. And I hated my life. And it was in year nine that I, I planned my own suicide. And I would get prescribed um, heavy duty ibuprofen for spraining my ankles and wrists or whatever for when I was participating in PE. And I started to take more than the recommended dose. I wasn't at that point deliberately trying to kill myself, clearly, because I was only taking one or two tablets more. But it was almost like I was trying to f cover up the pain I was feeling in my whole body. But it just wasn't working. And... <laughs> yeah. But the bullying, it happened... This is just from secondary school. My bullying in primary school was even worse in a way. In primary school it was only name calling and, you know, the verbal bullying. But it was just, they would always find something. And even when I fixed the thing they were, they were, they were making comments about, they would find something else to call me. So I had ugly shoes. So I made my mum buy me new ones. And then they moved on to calling, saying I had nits, and at one point I did. But even after I'd gotten rid of them, and I hadn't had them for years, they were still like, oh yeah, she's got nits, blah, blah, blah. And, and then I had a cyst form on this part of my face. And so obviously, easy target for them. She's got spots, she's spotty, spotty, spot, 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 blah, blah, blah focus on the spot, put an operation on it to get it removed. And then my mum died and came back to school and obviously for the first maybe maybe month they would leave me alone because my mum had just died, I was the orphan girl. But then after that month or so had passed, it went straight back to it. But instead of being spotty now, I was scar faced or she's got a scar or some other shit. Kids are horrible people. <laughs> but yeah. This is a very rambly video video. But basically, my point is I was bullied so much that by year ten I was fifteen. Fourteen, fifteen ish. It got to a point where I was just like, fuck it. I will become what everybody fears. And so I started, I didn't call people names and I didn't physically hurt anybody. But if someone lashed out at me, I would lash back. Lash back. That doesn't make much sense, but it's fine. But basically, I would lash out back at them if they lashed out at me. 
tried to stab someone with a fork at one point in the middle of a catering class because they pissed me off on a day I wasn't having it. It was a day I'd already been, I'd already felt shit about, so I tried to stab him with a fork. And if my friend hadn't stepped in, because at this point I regained one friend, um, yeah, if she hadn't stepped in, I probably would have stabbed him, and I would have become the girl who stabbed someone in the middle of class. Obviously, I felt bad about it, sort of, afterwards. But it was just the rage I felt in that moment. And what's worse is that I was gratified from doing that horrible thing. Because after I tried to stab someone, I was left alone for the rest of the year. People didn't talk about me behind my back, so they stopped name calling. And it worked. I I was I wasn't the one people feared necessarily. But I was the one they left alone because I was unstable. And anyway. And so I just basically don't bully people. Anyway, peace out. And see you in the next vlog.